Hey everyone, Tony Corbell here for Team Bowens, and I appreciate you tuning in, and thanks for all the support on the blog. We are getting a lot of viewers and, and regular readers to the blog, and we appreciate it very much. All the questions that you send in, we try to respond to them as quickly as we can, one-on-one, -on -one, but occasionally we get questions that require a larger audience. In other words, that several people are asking the same question. And for those, we do select to, to do these video Q&A, if you will. So today's question is, is coming to us from Gavin uh, in Bozeman, Montana. And his question is, what's the big deal with the importance of shutter speeds when working with flash outdoors? Um, Gavin, it's real simple, and we've talked about this a little bit, and we've touched on it in some of the blog posts, and you'll see it coming up in a, in a, in a new um, webinar that I'll be recording shortly in New York, um, and that Joe, Joe uh, recently did as well. And so I think you'll find that we regularly will talk about some of these topics and techniques. Um, shutter speed, it's interesting how shutter speed and apertures work and that we live in a world of photography that we call reciprocal. It's a reciprocal nature. So if, you know, 500 at 5.6 is the same exposure as a 60th at f16, unless you introduce flash in an ambient situation. And so those two that were married together with shutter speed and aperture in an ambient situation, that, that bond is kind of broken now when you introduce flash and ambience. And the difference is, the flash is completely controlled on your primary subject by the aperture and the shutter speed takes care of your background and not just background but ambience and that also includes shadow detail so what that means basically uh, Gavin is real simply this you need to figure out I think there's one of three different exposures basically for your backgrounds and I learned this from my good friend Doug Box basically your background can look as it truly looks when you're outside it can look brighter than it truly looks, or it can look darker than it truly looks. So you figure that out. So you can take a meter reading, you can shoot examples, you can shoot test pictures until you get the background the way you want it. And let's say your exposure is 125 at f16. Then if that's the way you want your background to look, the answer is very simple. Bring up your flash to read the same. And you're gonna have a background and a flash that match. Now, if that puts a little more light on your subject's face, you might back off the flash a little bit but it's a personal thing and it's personal testing as we move forward we're going to answer a lot of these questions in much much more illustrated detail and also the use of a flash meter outdoors and the importance of understanding and reading those percentage numbers that are built into all the Sekonic light meters so if you'll stay tuned I promise you we're going to get to those in the next few weeks uh, and do a webinar on that and we'll also get a video on that posted here there'll be a link posted at Team Bowens Dot com and also you can check out all the videos that we're shooting and all the stuff that we're recording on Bowens TV at YouTube so thank you for the question and uh, Gavin I think this is a great question and it's something a lot of people just don't understand but once you introduce flash in an ambient situation you've got two basic exposures that you're taking at the same time but we're going to talk in the future about exact control over each one of those so thank you very much and thanks for tuning in everyone mm -hmm.